For today's quiz, I've got this rubber stopper. And this rubber stopper is connected to a string that goes around this pole. It's rigidly affixed. The question asks, if I were to take this rubber stopper and throw it around in a circle and let this wind round and round this metal pole, what happens to its tangential or linear velocity? That is, if it were going in a straight line, its speed. Here's what your quiz looks like. I'll hold that up now. As always, mark your confidence and list your answer to the best of your ability. Typical student responses are that as this winds around the pole, it's gonna end up going faster and faster and faster. Most of the students are gonna be pretty confident with that answer. But I'm not asking for its angular rotation rate. I'm asking for its linear velocity. And that is a little bit more perplexing. So the students are gonna to have to think a little bit, so give them some time. As the students think more and more, they all recognize that, of course, it's gonna end up spinning faster and faster per second around the pole. But most will say the radius is also decreasing, and that's what they're struggling with. They might even ask, could we see the demonstration before we put our answer? And I'll say, sure. And let me go ahead and do that. Take this. Throw it around. And you can see it goes around quicker and quicker and quicker. But what about its velocity? Students are really going to struggle with this one. Push them as hard as you can, but eventually we're just going to have to uh, use some mathematics to figure this out. The only way to really solve this problem is for us to draw it out and see what our equations can help with. Let's make a before and after picture. So maybe I'll just start right here and I'll draw before and after. On this side over here, I'll end up having the before picture with a long radius and over here when it's shortened. So I'll make this our pole. That'll be the pole, and let's say that I have a few wraps around here, maybe just one or two, and then I'll have this go out. To something like this. We'll put our mass out here. And we'll call that the mass of the stopper. Once it starts winding again, and I'll call this radius r, radius r, over here, what I'll now do is I'll end up taking it so the radius is much smaller. Start up here, we'll use this as the pole again. In this case, it's wrapped many times around here, something like that, and maybe it is much, much closer. Something like that. And then I'll put the same mass here, and it might have dropped a little bit. Call that mass after, and then I'll call this the new radius, radius after. We could see it's clearly smaller on this side. So this thing is gonna be spinning around, spinning around, and it's getting closer and closer to the pole. We can end up doing a before and after picture. We could say momentum before equals momentum after, and that's gonna be the angular version. Angular momentum before equals angular momentum after. Maybe I'll put a B and an A here to make it really explicit. But we'll use little prime symbols to differentiate the before and after. I'll put a where statement right here, where angular momentum is equal to it's inertia times its angular velocity. So I could say I before omega before must equal I after omega after. And when you think about something going around in a circle, it's gonna end up making more of a hoop shape where everything's gonna be on the outside. We'll ignore that little extra bit um, that is gonna be supplied by the string. Pretend that all the mass is out in the stopper. So I can end up saying, um, 
where the inertia is equal to mass times radius, and that's going to be squared. So I can write m r squared omega equals m after radius after squared omega after. And all the students will be able to see with their own eyes that it's going to end up going around in a circle faster and faster and faster. But the radius is getting smaller, so is it slowing down? Is it staying the same speed? Or is it picking up speed? That's where it gets difficult. So we need to be able to relate our linear straight line velocity to an angular uh, velocity. And we can do that by saying, um, we could say velocity tangential, straight line velocity, is equal to our r omega. Or we could say omega is equal to velocity all over r. That's going to help us right there, because then I could put that in for each of these. I could say m. Actually, we can get rid of the m's. The mass of the stopper before is the same as the mass of the stopper after. So I could say since mass before equals mass after, I can cross those out and get rid of that altogether. Now we can just have our r squared omega equals our r squared after omega. And now we can plug in our v and our r. So I can end up saying my omega is going to be r squared. That would be v all over r equals r squared. And that's an after. And omega would be velocity after all over r. Some of your students will be able to see this right away and they'll know the answer, but most are still going to struggle. They'll say, well, one of these r's can cross out with one of those r's. That r can cross out with one of those. So I'm going to end up having r v equals r after v after. Hopefully they can see it now, but if not, we can say, well, if this r right here is five times that r. So if r equals five r after, I can end up saying, I'm just putting that right in here, and I'll say, um, instead of r, I'll put five r after v, divide by this r after, equals v after. R crosses, R prime and R prime cross out, and the V equals five of our initial. In other words, as our radius decreases, our velocity increases. That's a hard problem to do without using equations. But what we find out is as it spins, around faster and faster and faster, even though the radius is getting smaller, it's still going in a linear direction, faster and faster and faster. All right, that's your quiz for today. Thank you for watching another Idealized Science Institute video. We are a nonprofit organization. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want, leave a comment below. It's helpful to us. If you can financially support us, go to our website and hit the donate button. If you can't, simply by sharing these videos with other teachers and students in your life will be helpful. While at our website, you'll find that we have our Idealized Science Institute book that'll help you engage your students in dialogic discourse. There you'll also find we have a podcast where we break down educational research. We also have long-form lessons. If you're a teacher, you can watch these and go in the very next day and enact these. Along with this, we also have many other resources, including more quick quizzes. So thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.